guys okay uh kyle bray here uh, i had recorded uh, another video however i don't know what happened but my uh screen recording system just shut down anyways so uh what i was doing is i was uh describing to you guys how i'm trading okay and how i took my entries for this morning um the way that i trade i my favorite time to trade is when the new four hour candle opens when the new four hour candle opens it's gonna set up price to do big things right not every day is going to be beautiful, but um, every day um, is going to give me a clear indication for the most part at where price is going to go. And if it doesn't give me a super clear indication, either I'll switch to maybe another pair like GJ, maybe I'll look at EU. But for the most part, um, the only pair that I really trade is USD Jappy and gold because gold has a negative correlation to USD Jappy, so they confirm each other. Now, going... Back to re-saying what I was saying earlier, um, if we go to the daily chart, right, if we do like a small breakdown, um, as we can see on the daily, we had already a third tap on the daily, so it was nice pivotal sales way up here uh, at the beginning of the week um, on, a, on a nice scalp. I'm not a swing trader. I can't swing for the life of me. Um, I've only been able to hold a few successful swings, anything more than like 10 to 20 pips, or for the most part, all of my entries take around 10 pips. I usually shoot for 10 pips. If I get less, I'm just as happy as 10. Um, the reason for that is uh, pips over profit, right? It doesn't really matter what your profit is. If you can't catch pips, you're never going to get profit. So that's the mentality of a good trader is understanding the difference between pips and profits. If you're always shooting for profits, you're never going to get your profit. But if you have an exact idea of where your pip mark is or if you're scalping where your next target is uh, between the different zones, then you've got an idea of how many pips that you can catch depending on your zone. And if you've got a script on your MetaTrader 4, uh, I use MetaTrader 4, I use the close all script. So like on MetaTrader 4, you'll see you'll see this. Um, this can indicate that I can um, make buys or sells in the market. Uh, I use TradingView just to mark up my charts because I love the way TradingView's chart looks. And TradingView is also partners with um, like Awanda, Forex.com, and uh, these other other uh, like leading brokerages directly kind of tied in with Forex. And because these brokerage, these are basically the most regulated brokerages. So because they're the most regulated brokerages, I like to look at this chart to make my analysis. And then I trade off of my MetaTrader 4 using um, my uh, brokerage, right? So breaking down the chart again. I like to start trading right at right at four a.m. Uh, right at six a.m. Right when the new four-hour candle starts. And what we know about price, right, is when price is in momentum, it's going to create lower lows and lower highs. If it's going uh, bearish, if it's going bullish, it's going to create higher highs and higher lows, right? So if I was going to click on, uh, where'd my little indicator thing go? Here we go, a little, little bar. Um, if I make some clones of this, like lower highs, for example, as price See, there's a bunch of like you know minor ones in there. As you can see, when price concludes like this after this 10 a.m. candle close, you can see price closed no wig on a lower high. Well, where else is it going? It's purely exhausted, right? So I, when I'm looking at um, trading view, trading view is going to give me the best signals possible because if you're trading on a brokerage that possibly is unregulated then if you're trading on one of these unregulated brokerages but you like the brokerage just because it allows you to do high leveraging then you're more you're susceptible to stop punts and such so my four hour candle on on my like metatrader four hooked up through my brokerage might give off like a wick up here they might give off different types of signals that might indicate something else so all of my signals and ideas are coming from trading view because of the um, like partnership that forex.com, Rwanda, etc. So I usually go with either Forex Char Choice or Rwanda. It really doesn't matter. So if I type in like USD Jappy, you've got them different here. So you've got Rwanda or the Forex Choice, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so pertaining to knowing that prices and momentum, it's going to make lower highs, right? Lower lows. And then let's just do another little little clone. These are for like temporary scalps, temporary times that you're looking to either position trade, um, swing trade, um, 
you know, there's different scalping trade. I'm, a, I'm like a pure scalper. And then if I'm going to swing, I scalp to swing. So by running, like, for example, if I'm already 10 pips in profit, and I've already, however many entries I've opened, maybe I close half my entries. Then I leave the other half running with stop loss and profit. That's how I swing, right? And you can get an idea for um, how to swing by looking at the higher time frames and getting an idea for ranges. Like, for example, if I knew that price like right here was gonna you know was gonna go down so if you had at the time like you had this you had this um supply zone like up here right well let's do a pip count as you can see like if i'm going for 10 pips which i usually just go for 10 pips there's your 10 pips so if your 10 pip already gets hit and it, let's say it pushes the 15 pips or 20 pips then you can adjust your stop loss in your profit so if I'm already, let's say, up 20 pips in that position, maybe move my stop loss to where I'm going to put this black line that you can see. Um, let me edit it and see if... Make it a little thicker just so you can get a better idea. So if my profit target was 10 pips, I'm here. I already take my 10 pips per position. But if you have maybe half your pips you want to run or half your entries you want to run, not pips... And then if it pushes down to, let's say, 20 or so, put your stop loss in your profit. And as you can see, look what price does. It just continues to keep going. And then depending on, um, you know, depending on um, where your stop loss is, depending on how happy you are with the pips and profit you've obtained, then you can get a good idea of where you want it to close, etc. So if I have like a, if I have a scalp that I aim for 10 pips and it keeps pushing, and I just moved my stop loss and profit. Well, what if you had took a sell, a sell like on a lower high off the four hour time frame? You can't get any clear off the four hour time frame. So if you know that the destination between zone to zone, for example, we've got zone to zone. We've got, I'm just doing like a, just a quick little, little zone like areas. My zones are like fairly big right here just to kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm looking for. But if you're placing cells here and you've got a and you and you know that the next the next zone is down here, well, you can get a kind of a clear idea of prices and momentum going bearish. Well, just by placing cells right there, you could have a clean, you know, up to 14 pips profit just for here. So your take profit could really be 15 pips, not 10 pips, like what I usually do, right? And then if it breaks through that zone, where's it going? Where's the next zone? Well, the next zone's here. So that would have been around 30 pips. So in real real uh, honesty. Um, you just by placing sales at this at this time, you can have your 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 profit idea saying, okay, well I want 15 pips, or I'm always I'm just a safe trader, so I like to just stick with what I like to stick with. If I can guarantee a certain amount, I'm just going to take that and be happy with it. But you can get an idea just from your supply and your demand zones, um, support and resistances where your profit target is, right? So. Now that I'm done with this little ramble, um, you guys can check other videos that I'll post in the future or reach out to me and I can give you guys some pointers or tips, etc. If we're looking at right now, okay, so this was this morning. So I'm waiting for the next four hour candle to close. So it's going to be 6 a.m. If you notice at the bottom, it says 2. That's 2 a.m. my time, a specific standard, LA time. And as soon as this closes this four hour closes this is brilliant this whole idea right here is absolutely brilliant why because i knew on the daily we are in bearish momentum right i knew that there was wick that needed to get filled okay and then you've just got all of these demand zones right i'm just looking left i'm not i'm not even looking right yet but just by looking left you can get an idea from where price is touched and where your next zone is and as you can see, price blew through my wick fill. So my cells this morning were right as the candle closed. If I go down to the 15-minute time frame, you guys can check my Instagrams too. Reach out to me. I'll help you guys out. If we look, this is right where my cells are. So here's right at right before the 6 a.m. My alarm goes up at 5:40. I'm up at 5:40. I do my chart analysis. I see where price is going today, which is clear as ever. As soon as I woke up, I just Stacked a couple cells, a few cells up. My cells are right around here, right? These are where my cells were. And then 
my take profit is 10 pips. Well, as you can see, that didn't take long. Before 6.15, profits were already accumulated within the next 15 minute time frame. So in 15 minutes, I collected all the pips that I needed, right? I just caught, I caught 30 pips just on this little push. I only put three entries on, okay? That was just this morning. Some days I put more, but today I just put three entries on. I had a, I had a uh, swing going on EU. I was comfortable with that, right? But as we can see, when price is in momentum, it's going to do the exact same thing that the higher time frames are going to do, right? So if you have a higher time frame telling you that we're going bearish, what is the 15 minute time frame? I'm using the 15 minute time frames, the five minute time frames to either do my hyper scalping or my more position scalping, uh, scalping, my more position trading scalping, right? So um, just as we know what the higher time frame did, let's do lower time frame 15 minute. We have a higher high. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for a price. If price is in momentum, as you can see, between these supply and demand zones, we have zone here, quick and easy zone. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so there's a little better idea of where a nice little zone would have been. Perfect. So as you can see, let's see, maybe the bottom of these guys, is that like kind of where it went to? That's like the next uh, direction area. So anyways, as you can see, here's a higher high. Now we have a low, uh, excuse me, this is supposed to be lower low. Now, this is where the fun comes in. Once I have 2-1 confirm, this is where I'm taking all, most of my sells or my buys, depending on the direction. Once that first lower high is formed, it's game over. Now, I'm not trading at this time at 2.30 in the morning, obviously. But I'm waiting for price to make its breakout and then to do its 2-2 formations um, off like the 15-minute time frame, right? So as you can see, look, if you had a 10-pip profit target, done. Sells anywhere in here, and within 45 minutes, all your profit is already taken. Or, you know, you run stop loss and profits, whatever, as you can see where it went. So unless you're over there in, you know, the UK, um, you're not really going to be trading at this time. But UJ is not really active at this time anyways. The only reason why this was even active is because it was of news. And the, um, um, who was it? Yellen was speaking out of the country, as you can see, 2 a.m., well, any USD news at 2 a.m. wouldn't make sense because uh, the U.S. dollar market's not open at 5 a.m. You know, the 5 a.m. is when the market opens. So as you can see, I did a little research and I was like, okay, well, why was this going on? And as you can see, where am I at? I'm losing my stuff. As we can see, uh, Yellen speaks. Anytime Yellen speaks, usually does does stuff and what what do we see was it was at the two all i'm really caring about is the 2 a.m so obviously i'm not trading at that time but usually uj shouldn't have like really nice movement by that time uh, but as you can see look right at 2 30 right after she spoke makes the lower high just to continue in the bearish momentum right so as we can see we've got lower low let's do a little clone we got another lower low, and then what do we got? I am waiting for moves like this, right? I'm waiting for moves like this. I'm waiting for price to make its 2-2 formations when price is in momentum, right? As soon as price is in momentum, you're Gucci. This is what you guys are looking for in order to make your entries. If you're looking at the higher time frame, and the higher time frame is telling you sell, either sell immediately and once you have confirm. Or, um, of course, you want to wait for your setup. So if price is already on a resistance and it's and it's doing like, like this was right at London Open. So London pre-open launched up an hour before. Brilliant. Look at London's pre-open. Launch up nearly 30 pips just to hit the resistance, right? And what do we know? If price is hitting a resistance on the 15-minute time frame for like three candles, four candles, that's a whole hour. It's not going up. At that time, it's not going up. If we put some EMAs on, it would have been an EMA magnet. And you would have said, here's your 14 or 15 EMA. And it was so far away from the 14 EMA, it needed to come back down and recalibrate and retouch this. So sell resistance, right? We've got three candles up here. Whatever profit targets. Anyways, I don't want to get you guys off of the track, but I'm just giving you kind of a breakdown on the market structure of what I'm looking for, right? 
So as soon as as soon as I get up, I'm up at 5:40. 5:40 is when my alarm goes up. I do my quick market analysis. Usually it shouldn't take that long because I know what I'm looking for. It works like clockwork every single day. And what do we got? We got UJ made this huge bullish push just to make a pullback. It's just still overall low, right? Makes this pullback. First thing I notice as soon as I wake up is okay, well, price has this big wick now. So I wait for the candle to close. As soon as the candle closed, done. I was done. Put my sales in, had my take profit. 10 pips. That was my whole profit target. Just like that. Done. Done within 30 minutes. Right? As soon as that, as soon as this next time is going, I'm just done. Now, if we pay attention to what price does at that time, if we know price is going down, just trade the trend. Right? The trend is your friend. So now we got another lower high. Lower low. This is sitting on the support here. However, when I'm looking at like my two two confirms, um, I'm going to be gauging this as like the lo the recent lowest low because if price does not break going up, then this is the two one confirm going down, right? So then I'm gonna have lower low. Now I got another lower higher here. So as my sales are here, price just continues to flow in momentum. If we go to the five minute chart, the five minute chart might even be prettier. 550, exactly. So like when I'm doing my hyper scalps, what I'm looking for is I'm waiting for price to make a small pullback like this in between zone to zone. And as you can see, this would have been like zone to zone. This is this would have been like the minor zone in between. They're all pretty much minor zones if it's on the fifth, five minute time frame. But as you can see, if I'm hyper scalping, these are my profit targets. So if here's my first little pullback, then I know it's confirmed to keep going down. And there would have been your hyper scalps, right? So if there's five pips right there and then hyper scalp, um, you know, you stack 10 entries, that's 50 pips. So guaranteed five pips, now it went to 50 pips, just like that. And if we're running... Just for the sake of argument, let's say we're running 100.0 uh, lots, right? Which equivalent to 1K per pip. If you caught 50 pips, what does that equal? 50 grand. Minus the brokerage fees and, and such. It could be a little less than that. But um, as you can see, that when I'm hyper scalping and, and such, these are these are these are something that I've I've mastered, I've perfected. Um, you know, hyperscalping is difficult. However, when I am trading off of um, confluence with the with the um, the four hour time frame, it just gives you the clearest idea of where price is going to go, right? So this would have been my little uh, hyperscalp here. This is what I would have been waiting for a small pullback, boom. And then usually I'm just looking for one of these a day, and I'm just done for the day. Uh, keep in mind, as soon as this price, uh, as soon as this starts to closes just right here i mean you've got five minutes basically to put entries on if you're guaranteed five pips for example let's i mean in five minutes i can put 100 entries if i wanted to um, do i do that no not when i hyper scalp because it's the profits usually come so quick not only do you not have time to put in that many entries but it can give you an idea so basically based off of the 15 minute time frame As we can see, prices and momentum, right? The, let's do a little recap. Let's go to the four hour. Price had a wick fill. That's what we knew. Right when this, right when six o'clock opened, confident sells no matter what. Right out any drawdown, it's going down at that time, right? Gold was confirmed up. Um, as you can see, like look what gold did. Gold went straight up. Look at the four hour time frame. Look how the four-hour time frame left off. This was at 2. This was at um, 2 a.m., right? You would think like, okay, well, this is going to continue wick fill. But these are little things that not a lot of people pay attention to is, look, price closed, no wick. So what do we know about no wicks? If we do a little recap on UJ's four-hour time frame, no wick, like here, for example, 
when it's on a lower high, I mean, where's it going? It's exhausted. It's going down. These same rules can apply on the smaller time frames, the 15-minute time frame, even 5-minute time frame for hyperscalping, 2-2 formations, etc. Works all the same way. So if we look at gold, look what gold did. Closed no wick. Although that wasn't enough confirmation for me, I was only trading UJ because I saw wick fill. But then if we look at gold, let's look at what gold did. Look what gold did. So you're right at 6 a.m. Price is just rejecting. Price is rejecting to do 2-2 two, two to go up now. That's 2-2 two, two confirm go up. How does that look? Looks like this. We got a lowest low. The higher time frame is already telling us bullish, right? So we're already bull mindset. This is not an overall higher high. This is not overall higher high. But when I'm looking for 2-1 confirms on the 15 minute, this is how I draw them up. Now I've got 2-1. Right, so one as in lower low, two as in higher high, two one, two one confirm for two two bullish structure now, change of direction. And what do we know? Right by six six forty five, right after six forty five, too much rejection. Where's it going? Up. What did UJ do? Right at six right at six forty five. Let's look. Ah, would you look at that? Confirm to go down. Same thing. As we can see, wick fill on a lower high. Where's it going? It's not going up. This is not too too go up. We're already sell bias from the higher time frame. So what did it do? My initial sell is here. Drop the 10. Catch my 10. Pause trading more. Buy sell on the lower high. Down to the next zone, right? This was the next zone via higher time frames. Boom. Confirm. Right there at 645. So not even an hour into trading in the day, I'm already done. Look at gold, same thing. I didn't trade gold, but if I was trading gold, here we go. Boom, you're done. Payout would have been nice on gold this morning. Launched. It launched. 10 standard pips on gold is a lot of money, guys. That's a lot of money on gold. Same thing for UJ. UJ dropped, right? So if we're looking at GJ now, let's look at what GJ did. Four hours. I didn't trade GJ for the morning because I didn't know exactly where it was going. So as we can see here, look what the two o'clock did. There's wick fill. What did it do? It filled that wick and some. Went down. Nearly 20 pips. Look at the 15 minute time frame. What did it do? Right here at five. Here is for the 6 o'clock. So here's right when 6 a.m. open. So there's Wakefield going down right there if we are already sell bias. Shoot for your 10. While wow, your 10 pips came within that first 15 minute candle, you're done for the day. Right? But what did it really do? It went down and hit a support. And then look what it did. By 7. Okay, now we have okay, now we got a change of direction. We're sitting on the we're sitting on these uh supply zone. We're sitting on our support, right? We're sitting on our support, and we got all this. This was let's let's count how many how many hours this was. We've got one candle, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two hours, two and a half hours. So that whole four hour candle was just not breaking it, right? It was not breaking it. It did wick fill. Four hour time frame did wick fill. This was a wick fill. Easy money still. We're going to the fifteen minute now. There's your money was right here. Your money was right here, right? But then look what it did. It confirmed direction. It's hitting the support. Bounces off the support. Bounces off. Now it's just making a dynamic support on this 14 EMA now, right? Now we've got a rally. We've got the, the zone. We've got the launch. We've got the rally. And now what do we do? Here's our next profit ranges here. This is just on the 15 minute. Usually I draw these up on the hour and the four hours so you can get an idea. Now what did price do? It did a beautiful, right? Lower low. Higher high. And as you can see guys, this already is tons of pips right here. What do we got? 2-1 confirm. 
right before the end of this four hour candle. Well, I guess like an hour and 15 minutes. But anyways, 2-1 confirm. Lower low, higher high. It's a higher high because it broke past this recent, right? It broke past this recent zone. This would have been my um, this would have been my highest uh, resistance port. Blows past it. Now what does it do? It's the resistance turns support. Rejection, rejection, launch. 2-1 confirm. Right as I made the small pullback here, that's my entry. I'm waiting for those small pullbacks in between the zones. As you can see, we're in between the zones. Look what look what uh, GJ launched today from this morning. All right, let's just do it from like 8 a.m. 70 pips, that's ridiculous. I don't know why I don't trade GJ more, I swear. I'm always just sticking with UJ and gold. The reason why I didn't trade uh, GJ anymore is because GJ is like that wild ex-girlfriend or I guess boyfriend. And it's just one of those pairs where it's like you just know where it's going, you know where it's going. Then all of a sudden it throws like some random wick and freaking cancels all your stop losses and then goes the direction you want. It was just one of those slightly more volatile volatile pairs uh, between the currencies. And the British pound and the U.S. dollar is fairly similar, but the, the pound is obviously worth more. So um, obviously it's going to affect the pair more. So as you can see, though, for the most part, you uh, like UJ moves very smooth, doesn't throw out too many crazy indicators and wicks, etc., but GJ does. But when GJ has these confirms, especially on the 15 minute, if you have a 15 minute like 2 2 confirm on, on GJ, it's golden. Look at 70 pip launch. And let's look at the four hour. So the four hour was initially wick filled down. But then what did it do? Rejected and then did its little 2 2 off the 15 minute in here. Launch lower low higher high higher low and what does it do if now price is in momentum? Oops, I cloned the wrong thing. I'm just gonna delete these again a little chubby. We got the new higher high now, new higher low. As you can see, confirm. Here's your pullback. Here's your, I mean, it rejected three times on this support now. Now it's going up to the next zone. See, it was in between the zone. It had room to go. It had room to go to reach the top, the high of that zone. So, as you can see, guys, this is why you got to wait for the new four hour candles to open. If you don't wait, if you don't wait for the new four hour candle to open, then you're really not going to get an idea where price is going to go. So, as you can see, like, for example, Look at this, for example. We've got three rejections on a, on a resistance, right? It's rejecting three times on the four-hour time frame. That's 12 hours rejection, right? We got 12 hours rejection. So where's it going? Sell resistance. Goes down. Now, look, it closed. Now we're really freaking sell bias. If anything, it needs to come up to make a new lower high to continue bearish structure. If we push down this far... 60 pips like or so, if we push down this far, it doesn't make sense that price is going to go back up, especially on the resistance, on that high of a resistance, rejecting on three candles, the fourth candle now pushed down, right? The same thing, look on this new higher low, one, two, three, three candles on a support, where's it going? It's going up. It's the same concept. So this is like the small little pullbacks I would have been looking for. So as you can see, this is right before... Four, is this right in the Nikki time? Yeah, Nikki time is Nikki open is in this time right here. So this is the new four hour candle after Nikki. What did it do? Continue bearish structure. And as you can see, right for the new four hour candle for London, what does it do? Just launches down. So this is where you can scalp the swing. You've got your 10 pips mark, whatever your thing is, stop loss and profit. major swing after that 130 something pips ridiculous this is gj pays out way harder than uj does i just like uj because it's textbook and it's clean pair it's just a really clean pair in my opinion is it 12 o'clock yeah it's right at 12 so we're gonna expect a little push on these pairs seems like 
Um, so anyways, guys, this is what I'm doing, right? I'll do another quick rundown. I'm waiting for the four hour to close. The four hour closed here. What am I doing? I'm selling. I catch my pips. I'm done for the day, right? Even on GJ, could have done the exact same thing. GJ is the exact same thing. In this time, continued bear structure. There's your wick fill. It filled the wick. Rejected, but filled the wick. It still filled the wick. And that was 18 pips profit target. You're done for the day. These are what I'm looking for. I'm just waiting for those four hour candles to close. I'm waiting for them to show me the direction. And depending on where the higher highs and the higher lows are, this is how I'm basing my trades every single day. And I catch my trades and I'm done. Um, if you guys want, you can. Uh, I started turning my Instagram into a trade journal. Um, you can check me out on on Instagram at Wolf of Forex. My Facebook is Kyle Bray. I'll be in a wheelchair, so you can't miss that. Um, you guys can check me out on the Instagram, on the Facebook. Um, you know, reach out to me if you guys have any other questions. Uh, if you guys want to get, maybe just need some little pointers, etc. Um, everything that I trade is based off of market structure, price action. I don't need no stinking indicators. Uh, the only ones I use are just usually fourteen fifty, just for confluence. Other than that, I have no use for them. They will do you no good. In honest reality. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. How long was this? Hopefully it wasn't too long and hopefully it got to the point. I'm a talker, so hopefully I didn't over talk and you guys are actually able to reciprocate something. So thank you so much for watching.